Uh, Frank, did uh, LeBron participate in the shoot-around tonight? Yep. And what did you see out of him? In terms of energy, in terms of, you know, this is yeah, the first time was, with the group for the final was, uh, stretch. Excited to talk about uh, you know, the Cleveland experience, you know, over All-Star weekend and, you know, being back home. Um, and uh, locked into, you know, what we got to do next. You know, we're talking about the big game ahead of us and, you know, this being a big game in terms of the standings. But, you know, what we can do down the stretch on and, and locked in, ready to go. You know, for a long time, you guys have taken a long view of this season. Do um, you think, sort of, LeBron, you've been talking about this being a big game, does it make you think about how your approach has changed even to individual games as you're... Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the long view is, is to be patient with the results. But we've always had a, a stay in the moment, the next game is the only game that matters, focus, you know, so... Uh, that doesn't really change, you know, for this game, whether we're playing the Clippers or uh, any other team. You know, uh, when we win as many games as possible to, to move up in the standings and, you know, hopefully build the habits that will help us play our best basketball down the stretch. Frank, uh, in terms of that that long view, not wanting to necessarily ever get too high or too low, like you're saying, or, or put too much, too much on one result. But when you are talking about coming out of the All-Star break, trying to make this final push, um, how big can this game be in terms of the tone you guys want to set for the final 24 years? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's important. You know, um, we want to come out of the gates playing, playing as well as we can, and we have a lot of ground to make up, you know, so, uh, you know, definitely, have, you know, the fact that it's against one of the teams, you know, that you want to catch in the standings uh, definitely makes it more important. Frank, how disrupting, obviously we know this team has been riddled with injuries all year, but Melo had kind of always been a guy that was always there. How disrupting was it to this group to kind of lose him? Yeah, I'm not sure what our record was, but just watching this last Clippers game, you know, where we, we lost at the, the, at the buzzer, basically, um, you know, that was the last time Melo played. It was February 3rd. You know, we played 11 minutes and went out in the, in the first half of that game. And, and that's where the Clippers sort of built their big lead you know, during that game. So uh, we have definitely missed him. And during the stretch, and uh, we're excited to get back. So, is, I assume he's responded yeah. well to the work. Yes, so uh, he said he was in the hospital, and we expect him to play. Do you uh, do you know how you're going to start tonight? I do. Would you love to share it with us? I, I'll share with you guys. Maybe you don't share it with the rest of the world. Turn the camera turn on. No, uh, I'll disclose it very much. So, my <laughs> <laughs> moment, I to tease. Yeah. What's, uh, so what's it been like uh, coaching one of the two cities in, in the league that has two NBA teams and share every night, same Sierra City, and have a five-game losing streak to the other team in the city? Well, it's not fun. You know, it's uh, you know, obviously these games carry a little bit more uh, internal importance for, the, for our city, you know, for our, uh, our organization, you know. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, they're, they're just another team in the Western Conference that, that we have to compete with. You know, and uh, yeah, you want to lose five straight to any team. You know, so you know, hopefully we can you know, reverse that tonight. Obviously, the goal isn't the goal is to get out of the plan and, and to move all the way up. But as you just thought stuff out and prepared stuff, has the thought that like, oh man, like that could happen against the Clippers? Has that entered your mind? Uh, not really, to be honest. But you know, any of those teams you know can be in that thing. Um. You see Dave's face, you see Bill's face. I can show mine. I'm illegally allowed to show you my oh, face yes, right now. Sure. Um, you'll see a lot of them in the crowd. And I did bring out the letter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, does it seem like sort of like it? it as you, you've just coached through an entire pandemic. Well, still ongoing. Um, do these moments register even to you? Like, like is this like a, a fence post moment a little bit? Yeah, I mean, hopefully. Yeah. For me, you know, I've been able to coach without a mask all season. Yeah. Uh, wear a mask, you know, sort of surge, so to speak. But uh, I know my assistant coaches are very excited, you know, that we can, uh, you know, lose room to some semblance of normalcy in terms of not having to wear a mask. So, uh, you know, who knows where the pandemic will go from here, but, you know, hopefully, again, you know, this is another uh, stepping, stepping stone for, you know, the world coming back to normal. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, back. Back. I'm just terrified.